everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a video on the Ellis Brooklyn fragrances. I have their brand new release called Sunfruit and I also have their library collection. So I'm gonna be trying these out, giving you my first impressions. If you're new here, then hello, welcome. We're all about perfumes. I have hundreds of other videos going through niche perfumes, designer perfumes, affordable perfumes. So do check them all out. And if you're a regular, do check to see if you're subscribed and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. And down below in the description box, I'll leave links to where you can buy these perfumes um, in UK, Europe, North America. I'm not sure if they're available in Australia, but I'll try. And in the description box, there'll also be links to um, my new lipstick, which I'm loving, and my perfume that I'm releasing later this year. You can pre-order it now. There's just a few days left where you'll be able to pre-order it. Um, so do get them in before it closes. Cool, so I was actually lucky enough to go to the release launch event for the new Sunfruit perfume, which is in the Bloomsbury Hotel in London, one of my favorite hotels in their library room, sort of matching the library collection. I was really excited to try these because the logo for the brand is a kind of like a lion, leopard, cat, picture um, and I love cats so I thought the logo is really cool and the founder of the brand B Shapiro was there so that was great to hear her personal story. So the name Ellis Brooklyn is not the founder's name it's actually named after her first child Ellis and when she was creating the brand she was pregnant with her and she had her and then Brooklyn is where she was living at the time Brooklyn New York and B was a really big columnist a beauty columnist New York Times, Vogue, um, really, you know, well known in the industry and decided to create her own perfumes. And I think she'd remained a columnist until recently. These are paraben free, non-toxic, um, which is what she wanted when she was pregnant. And that's kind of what inspired the brand. I believe they're still created in New York and there are 15 in the range. So I have nine of them that I'm going to be taking you through. So let's start off with the new one, Sunfruit. So obviously the bottle is super cool it's like a sort of matte frosted feel and it's this bright yellow with like a hint of green in the yellow it kind of reminds me of the color of a star fruit and of course the word sun fruit and I think she said that she wanted to just create something that was just really summery so it does kind of remind me of the smell of star fruit actually and um, it has a fig note in which creates a green fruitiness which is like a star fruit scent it also has some pear, so it's fresh at first, but it has a decent amount of coconut in and then orange blossom, but also some iris. So it settles and becomes floral, like it's an orange blossom iris scent, but then that coconut is still there, adding a slight woodiness almost and that real um, coconut, like not like the milk, like the real flesh, that kind of deep taste that the flesh has. Um, it really brings that out in the scent. There's also also a little bit of amber and vanilla orchid so it's not like just a fruity light summer scent it has these more deeper undertones that coconut and the amber are quite deep so even though it's super yellow and it's called some fruit I think this is not necessarily only for summer you could wear this I think during the day in the winter time um, and it would just be like a fl deep floral because sometimes coconut perfumes can be quite warm and not necessarily summery. I'm thinking like Versace Crystal Noir. It is fairly light, it's an eau de parfum but I found it's not super heavy, super empower like powerful so I think if you could definitely wear this still in hot weather, humid weather and it wouldn't be too much. It, it doesn't perform like a strong eau de parfum, it's more like something you can really, you know, just like spray around you. The spray is quite a diffused spray as well, so it's the kind of thing that I would definitely like spray and sort of walk into or just spray it around rather than just spraying on the wrists or wherever. Um, so I think if you're looking for like a sophisticated summer scent, you like your slightly ambery scents, you like your florals, orange blossom, but you don't want something that's too fruity, tropical or sweet, I think this could be nice for summer. I think it would also be good layering on top of other scents if you have like an amber scent that you love that you always wear 
in the summertime you wanted to add that little bit of fig, that bit of coconut to make it feel summery, then it could be good layering perfume because it's not too heavy, it wouldn't take away from the original scent. So let's get into the library collection. They all have quite simple names, which I like, just like sort of one syllable or two syllable names. Cool, so it slides open. So here we have the eight different scents. So let's start with the first one, which is called Myth. So I think Myth is one of the originals from 2016 when the brand was launched, one of her first. And I would describe this as a musky, fresh perfume. So it has a lotus note in, which is really refreshing, but it also has like an ombre musk, like a musky cedar, even a hint of patchouli. So it creates a kind of airy muskness. It isn't powdery or floral like a Narciso Rodriguez. It's more airy, um, clean, sort of just got out of the shower, almost like that kind of laundry clean, very clean scent, very unisex I would say, and very light. I think these are Eau de Parfums, yeah they're all Eau de Parfums, so I have to say both of them do feel more like Eau de Toilettes, this is a very, again something you could like spray quite a lot of. I actually think that this one, Myth, is what Biche Perrault was wearing at the event because as I'm smelling it, it's immediately reminding me of her in the event. So I think that must be what she was wearing and it was sort of following her around like a sort of aura. So even though it's light and fresh, it does have some staying power. So next we have Rose or Rose with the double R, R, -R Rose. I can get it out. Cool, so. Hmm, that's a really lovely, very green rose. It's got a bit of lemon in, it has lotus, mm, and some peony, it's super fresh. That definitely reminds me of like, you know when you get flowers and you cut the stems, or you go into a flower shop even, it's that kind of green accord, as well as the sort of petals. It's not just the smell of, the rose, mm, really refreshing. That will be lovely like on a crisp spring day. Um, definitely daytime, refreshing, feminine. It doesn't have that heavy muskiness that some deep roses can have. Instead, it's just really lifted. Mm, that's probably one of the nicest rose scents I've smelled in a while. Um, yeah, I definitely like that. If you are looking for a green perfume but still want some floral, that's really nice. So next we have Fable. Hmm, interesting. So this one has a good amount of black currant in. Um, it's quite fruity, almost like a sour fruity. Hmm. So now I'm getting Neroli and Pettigran, that's what it is. A bit of honeysuckle. So this is again quite spring-like, quite fresh, crisp. Um, Mm. Now, at first it was really blackcurrant tea, almost sweet fruity, but that has faded very quickly to be a honeysuckle, neroli, pettigrain, sort of green, slightly citrusy, so that's really changed. Um, so if you don't like fruity perfumes, I wouldn't be put off by that initial blackcurrant because it's straight away gone into more of a green, neroli, citrusy green. Mm, now it's really lemony. So I think this would be good um, for quite humid hot weather. It's that sort of lemon Amalfi Coast vibe. Yeah, definitely fresh light. That's really light and it's become a really new rolly lemony scent. So next we have Reeve. Um, I don't know if this is pronounced Reeves or Reeves. Ooh, so this one's very unisex, almost masculine. Oh wow, so this has a suede note in, which I'm really getting. But again, lemony, pettigran, neroli, and a hint of lavender. This is a very typical lemony male, fresh lemony male scent. Um, kind of like a Aqua de Palma or, yeah, just any of the sort of lemony male scents, which I know are very unisex. But do you know what? It's now becoming all about the suede. I now get maybe 10% lemony, 90% suede. Mm. So I think if you like your suede, perhaps 
you wear, you're wearing a leathery suede outfit. This could go quite well. I always think of someone like on a bike, a biker person, like a motorbike with the, these type of scents because it's a bit rocky, a bit edgy. I'm definitely finding with these that they all really change the top note and, and then where it ends up are all really quite different. It's like a magic, isn't it? How something can smell one way and then another way um, 30 seconds later. Wow, so that's probably the most suede fragrance I've ever tried. A lot of perfumes have suede in and you can sense it, but this one is literally all about the suede now. So very, very unisex. So it looks like there is actually a mistake in this box. I've got two Reeves, whereas I should have a Reeves and a Raven, um, and the Raven's missing, so that's a shame. So this one next is a, it's called Sci-Fi and it's blue liquid, which is cool. So let's see what this smells like. Mmm, that's nice. It's a orangey, mandarin, bitter orange scent. Mmm, a bit of vanilla in there making it, it kind of reminds me of an orangey lemon fruit pastel, like a, it's not sugary sweet, but it's oh, like a boiled sweet maybe, or a sherbet lemon. It's that kind of vibe. Um, again, unisex for sure. Mmm, it's becoming like a vanilla-y orange. That's nice. It's reminding me of like chocolate orange at Christmas. Yeah, that's nice. That's again, could be worn any time of year because a vanilla-y orange works like at Christmas time, but also it works in the summer because you know, it's citrus, it's orange. I think that might be my favorite so far because it's like fruity warm. Mmm, that's nice. It's quite Moorish, quite addictive. So the next one is called Fawn. So again, Fawn has a neroli top note, but then it becomes quite a subtle coconut, slightly musky underneath. I have to say, after the initial neroli lemony top note goes, it's a very subtle, like a proper eau de toilette it feels like, even though it's an eau de parfum. And I get a kind of clean coconut with a lily of the valley. So very subtle and calming, very, simple, uh, unassuming. One of those smells where if you smelt it on someone, you might not necessarily think it was their perfume. You could think it's another product they've used, another cosmetic, because it's not like super flowery or sweet or whatever. It's that kind of more subtle vibe. Hmm. I guess fawn is like a baby, isn't it? So it's that kind of subtleness. So our last one is called West. Hmm. Now this reminds me of one of the Hermes Jardin perfumes. It's got basil in and I really do smell the basil and it's mixed with an orangey, clementine, blood orange. Mmm, I really, really get the basil. It's very, very green. If you're looking for a green summer perfume, this is very much the, that type of vibe as, as is the Hermes Jardin range. Mmm, hint of ginger. And it's got some oak moss and vetiver, which I think are combining with that basil to bring it and make it green. So West is definitely like the green one in the range for sure. But it's fresh, it's light, it's very clean. Yeah, if you love the smell of basil, then West is a basil perfume. Cool, so that was fun, that was interesting. I think my impression is that the Ellis Brooklyn fragrances are quite citrusy, they're all quite light, quite sort of airy, the kind of thing that you could definitely wear around the house, um, and something that has just, rather than it being like a fragrance, it's almost just like the scent of you, which I know is something that a lot of people look for, so I understand their success for sure. Um, I think a lot of them are definitely more spring-summer scents and definitely daytime scents, but pretty, I think I'd say they're all pretty inoffensive. You could wear them all to the office um, or to any occasion. My personal favourite was the sci-fi because it had that, I think it was the only one with a vanilla in um, and that orangey vanilla was quite Moorish and I like the name sci-fi and that it's blue. So that was my personal favourite. I do think the new sunfruit is nice because it's very sophisticated summer scent. Um, it's not just super fruity. And I do find it interesting how the scents changed as you wore them. It's almost like the top notes are not irrelevant but 
they go. So it's really all about the heart and the base, which are mainly floral, though a lot of them have that citrus opening. So yeah, interesting. Um, guys, let me know if you've tried any of the Ellis Brooklyn perfumes, which is your favorite, which do you like? Um, and if you've tried any of the other ones that I haven't been able to try here. So let me know in the comments. I do read all your comments. Um, but that's it, guys. So thank you so much for watching, as always. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.